Hey, sleep deprived, what's up, it's the Culture Detective here investigating your favorite movies, and today I'm going to be doing a movie roundup video, in fact the first one of 2024. So yeah, here we go. To start off, I'm going to talk about a couple movies I watched at the end of December that I didn't include in last year's movie roundup video. First off, I went to the cinemas and watched The Zone of Interest by Jonathan Glazer. This is a film that I've been dying to watch for a very long time because of its high praise and also because I trust in Jonathan Glazer. And yeah, I don't want to talk too much about it right now because I've already talked about it in my year end list. But also, I really want to rewatch it though because when I watched it the first time, I was really stressed out and I was also very sleep deprived and I feel like I didn't enjoy the movie as much as I could have had but what I can say now is that is that it is immaculately shot immaculately designed and it is a piece of art and I think I'll do a full review very soon 9 out of 10. Then I watched The Exorcist Believer right before the year ended yeah, I was on my quest to find the worst movie of 2023, and honestly, it's not that bad. It's just very bland, boring, inoffensive, and safe approach to the Exorcist story. This film completely saps the unsettling atmosphere and the magic of the original Exorcist. Some scenes are straight up laughable, and overall it is a very weak horror film that is very silly and a huge cash grab. 3 out of 10. Then, I finally finished watching Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2, the hidden inventory slash premature death slash Shibuya incident arc. Yeah, I finally finished watching this thing. I watched Jujutsu Kaisen non-stop for 5 days straight and binge watched most of the episodes. And yeah, this is crazy. Aside from the fact that the animators of this anime are getting mistreated and exploited and that really sucks, this is an absolutely insane ride of non-stop violence and bloodshed. It is peak action shonen seinen anime and it is just so brutal, so shocking, and so deadly that it straight up changes the genre of the entire series itself. 9 out of 10. Then school had finally started and I have entered USC and uh, the first class, first day, I took a film studies class and we immediately watched a movie on the first lecture, King Kong 1933. And to be honest, I admire the grand Hollywood set pieces, I love the amazing stop motion work, I mean for 1930s it is pretty amazing, and the exhilarating Kong vs other monsters fight scenes. But this film is also blatantly racist and misogynist, so much so that it's actually hilarious. One of my favorite scenes in King Kong is Jack confessing his love to Anne. Jack saying, well, um, uh, I guess uh, I love you. And Anne was like, why Jack? I thought you hate women. And when that scene happened, the entire class laughed. It's so unintentionally funny and it's freaking hilarious. 7 out of 10. Then I watched Cobweb by Kim ji -hoon. I almost went to the theaters to watch this film in Hong Kong, but I decided not to. Um, but yeah, Cobweb by Kim ji -hoon is the new Korean film from Kim ji -hoon. And it's a movie about making a movie, and it's about the passion of filmmaking, and I am a sucker for those kind of movies. However, I think the story is just okay. The cinematography is awesome though. I love the crazy wide angles and the crazy camera movements. I think it is very eccentric for Kim ji to do that. And I can relate to the main character's passion. I think Song kang -ho's acting is fantastic as always, but there just isn't enough for me to root for him. I feel like the ending isn't particularly rewarding either. So instead of feeling like a love letter to filmmaking, this movie just feels like a story about a director who would do anything to get his film made. 7 out of 10. Then for USC again, this time for a different class, I watched The Manchurian Candidate by John Frankenheimer. Yeah, it's a rewatch. 
yeah, I watched this film for my American film history class. It's the first lecture and we immediately watched the film. Honestly, on a second watch, I think I enjoyed it way better. The first 30 minutes is a lot of fun, but that does not excuse the yellow face or the Janet Lee filler character, but I can definitely see the exciting camera movements that make up the style of John Frankenheimer in his later works. 8 out of 10. Then, in order to prep myself for Godzilla Minus One, I watched Godzilla, the original film from 1954 directed by Ishiro Honda or Honda Ishiro. It's pretty good. It's very entertaining for a 1950s film. I love the themes of pacifism and war and post-war trauma, 8 out of 10. Then I finished watching ZOM 100 Bucket List of the Dead, and goddamn, this is one of the best animes of 2023. It's so energetic, so positive, so forward-thinking, and not cheesy at all. Every single episode presents something new and makes something, and makes everything so much fun, and I love the OP as well. What a banger. 8 out of 10. Then I watched Shin Godzilla by Ano Hideaki and... Yeah, it's a very interesting and artsy take on the Godzilla story, and I think Ano Hideaki is the GOAT! He's the GOAT! The GOAT! 8 out of 10. I know these short reviews are really short, but I've already talked about them in my Godzilla Minus One review, so check that one out. Speaking of which, I watched Godzilla Minus One, um, and it slaps really hard. And yeah, I didn't watch it before 2023 ended, so I didn't include it in the 2023 year-end list, but this will for sure end up in my 2024 year-end list, so stay tuned for that. But what I can say is Cinemark and uh, Crenshaw and Baldwin Hills is one of the worst cinemas in LA and possibly of all times. That's all I'm gonna say. 8 out of 10. Then for USC, once again, for my American film history class, I watched The Graduate by Mike Nichols. The first act of this film is a perfect 10 out of 10. The use of tight framing and editing makes Dustin Hoffman's character so awkward and shy and indecisive and stressed out and oh my god, that's exactly the kind of character I love the most. This is giving this is giving Bo is afraid vibes and I freaking love it. And then we have the brilliant gender role reversal and comment on post high school sexual anxiety and it's once in a while a movie just amazes me so much and make me sit on the edge of my seat and be like oh my god this is so well written the second act was a bit less enjoyable things slowed down and didn't go anywhere that interesting despite still being good and entertaining but then we have the last bit of the film which is just so much fun it's so wild sure there's some weird stalker behavior which is not very good especially nowadays um, but it's the 1960s and there's definitely a comedic side to all this madness so still very amazing 9 out of 10. Then I finished watching Leaving the World Behind or, or Leave the World Behind by Sam Esmail. Sam Esmail creator of Mr. Robot one of my favorite tv shows of all times and it's very anti-establishment and then suddenly he comes out with a Netflix film and it's produced by the freaking Obamas so uh, talk about anti-establishment I guess. But despite the frustratingly dumb characters and the occasional faux deep we live in a society dialogues and Mac Quayle's downgrade from innovative electronic film score to A24 imitating unsettling pianos and perhaps the overly fancy camera movements that was totally unnecessary, honestly though, this movie's not that bad. I don't know why, but I'm just a huge sucker for mystery films. This is a film about cyber attacks, yet it is written as if it's an alien invasion or some sort of apocalypse. Some scenes are borderline horror, and you know what? I really like that. The ending feels very unfinished, but I respect its boldness, and honestly, I had a fun time watching this movie. 7 out of 10. Finally, I finished watching Undead Girl Murder Farce. This is an anime that is adapted straight from a novel, and it's really wordy because of that. It also dabbles into murder mystery, crime, and stuff like that, and it's very fun. I do love myself a mystery thriller anime that has goth aesthetics and embraces a late 19th century belle époque European style. 
it's not smart and intricately written enough to be groundbreaking because the story still falls into many common plot points and twists, and even if I didn't see the twists slash reveals coming, I still don't care as much, but the story is still quirky enough to be very entertaining. The show dumbed down Sherlock Holmes and Moriarty and Arsene Lupin and uh, however, as a revisionist animification of these classic characters, it's honestly kind of fun. So uh, yeah, 8 out of 10. So what did you watch in the last couple of weeks or so? Comments below, let me know if you have you one more and thanks for watching.